Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the astrology and the I Ching for the weekend of October the 26th and 27th, 2024. I'm also going to have a look at the horoscope of Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister. You know, he is under a lot of pressure at the moment, I believe some members of parliament from his party have asked him to step down because he's so unpopular and there has to be an election. I think there has to be an election by the end of next year. Is that right? By the autumn of next year? I'm not a great expert on Canadian politics. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to look at Justin Trudeau's horoscope. Of course, Justin Trudeau, I suppose, could step down any moment. You know, these things happen in politics. You know, nothing happens. One expects someone to be there forever and then suddenly they just announce they're going to disappear. Or sorry, they're not going to announce they're going to step down. So you know, maybe by the time you, you're watching this video, um, he's gone, but maybe not. Um, and I want to look at what's happening over the next, I don't know, next six months. Because, you know, it does seem to me that the actual big action in Justin Trudeau's horoscope is more more next year than this year. But that doesn't mean to say it's not going to go um, sooner rather than later, perhaps as early as, uh, I don't know, this month. I think there's actually a deadline of October the 28th for, for him to respond for this call for him to step down. But anyway, I will be looking at Justin Trudeau later in the video. And what I want to do now is look at the astrology and the I Ching for this weekend. Now, before I start, just a reminder, I would be very grateful if you were to like this video, if you enjoy it. And if you're not subscribed and you enjoy the video, I would be really, really grateful if you were to subscribe. Anyway, let's look at what's going on this weekend. So here is the chart for the weekend. Uh, that top right, of course, is Justin Trudeau. And so I've set this chart for midnight on Sunday the 27th. So in other words, the chart is sort of halfway through the weekend and turning to, you know, what is, you know, what is what's happening. Uh, the moon, uh, the moon is moving from it's moving from Leo to Virgo. So this chart set for set for uh, set for midnight. Did I say noon? This chart is set for mid. So the chart is set for midnight on Sunday, October the twenty seventh. Uh, so halfway through the weekend. Uh, did I? I might have said noon. Sorry if I said noon. Anyway, it's midnight, and you can see that the moon is in Virgo. So actually the moon moves into Virgo on Saturday at quarter to five, what is it, quarter to five in the afternoon London time. So uh, that means uh, that if, if you're in Europe, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, certainly the weekend starts off with the moon being in Leo. And then sort of later, sort of in the UK, sort of late afternoon, Europe, early evening, the moon moves into Virgo. So that's that's the changeover. So you might want to say that uh, Saturday is going to be Saturday is going to be sort of moon in Leo day. Sunday is going to be a moon in Virgo day. Now, if you're in the Americas, then the moon moves into Virgo sort of earlier. Uh, it sort of basically moves i don't know something like if you're if you're in the uh east coast the moon would would move into virgo in fact sort of late morning on saturday so kind of depends to somewhat to, to it depends to some extent what your time zone is now as far as the main aspects this weekend are concerned well the moon as it moves through late Leo on Saturday, it does make a square to Uranus. So, you know, that moon square Uranus is of some importance. It, it, does, it does kind of um, stir things up a bit. Things uh, become 
a bit more tense and uh, things can happen and you perhaps have to remember that you know Uranus is is still quite close to the fixed star Algol and so the moon again stirs it up and anyone who's got a, a Uranus transit you know for example we know that Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu have Uranus uh, uh, Uranus is square their Mars so it may be that moon making that square to Uranus stirs things up for them so you know that that is a possibility but are we going to see anything spectacular probably not you know everything is a bit dramatic in the lives of uh, Donald Trump and Benjamin Net Netanyahu so that's that's Saturday then the moon moves into Virgo sort of I suppose late on Saturday it makes a sextile to the sun so that's nice moon and moon in Moon in Virgo, sextile of Sun in Scorpio, that uh, gives us a sense of things being um, in harmony with one another. That's always the case when the Sun and the Moon are in making making a favourable aspect. Things seem to be running together, and people perhaps seem to be working together quite well. And you know, with the Moon in Virgo, Sun in Scorpio, that is. Uh, that sounds a bit responsible, doesn't it? A little bit low-key. And perhaps that's what we want. After all this drama, some low-key sex style is, um, is really what we want. Then uh, on Sunday, we have Mercury making a quincunx to Jupiter. Mercury, quincunx, Jupiter. I suppose you could say Mercury is about what we say, how we communicate. It's quincunx, Jupiter could be that we're struggling to say something we're struggling to get our ideas out and in that struggle it's possible that we take things a little bit too far we don't quite know how to bring mercury and jupiter together so perhaps we need to be patient you know mercury is in scorpio mercury doesn't want to be pressured mercury does feel a bit pressured by by jupiter in gemini particularly Jupiter, Jupiter retrograde in Gemini. So it may be the case, particularly on Sunday, yeah, you might have something to say, you might feel you have something to say, but does it really have to be said? And then the final aspect on Sunday is Moon opposition Saturn. Um, I know that's a bit downbeat, but I suppose with Moon opposition Saturn, you could say on a, on a, in a positive way that it sort of helps to sort of stabilise things. But I think that, you know, there may be a sense with Moon in Virgo opposition Saturn that things get just a little bit too tied up in detail. There are things we have to deal with. We have to deal with this. We have to deal with that. And... Um, it it all starts to get us down a bit. So, I, I mean, moon, moon opposition Saturn is not an unusual aspect. It happens once a month. But this aspect just could um, mean that things aren't as smooth as, we, as we'd like. And so perhaps, you know, the weekend, as we move into Sunday, things in many respects could be starting to slow down. And that may also be the difference between Moon in Leo and Moon in Virgo. Moon in Leo is about perhaps wanting a certain amount of attention, uh, feeling what we'd like to be in the centre of things. But Moon and Virgo is very different. Moon and Virgo is a service sign. Perhaps we have to think about what we can do for other people rather than what other people can do for us. That is a, a way of looking at that transition. And that's a picture for midnight Saturday, Sunday in New York the moon six degrees virgo at midnight from the perspective of sydney australia so this is a representative of east asia australia new zealand the moon is at 28 degrees leo at midnight so if you're in australia then the the weekend is clearly demarcated so Saturday, P 
pure moon in Leo, that's what's happening. Uh, that means that Saturday, you know, that moon square Uranus I was talking about is probably going to be a feature in Australia, New Zealand at sort of the end of the day. Things late on Saturday, things last part of Saturday, things could be a little bit up in the air. There could be um, things going on that has, that, uh, that they have to be attended to, but there is a sense a sense of uh, of drama i suppose there could be or perhaps people being very stuck in their ways and being at times a little bit explosive but sunday if you're in australia or new zealand pretty much moon is in virgo okay it goes into moon moon goes into virgo early in the morning on sunday but you can regard sunday as being a moon in virgo day so that's uh, that's the weekend from the perspective of two locations, and I want to look also at the heliocentric picture. So this is the positions of the planets. If we put the sun at the center of the solar system, and so this tells us about what is quite possibly the main aspect of the weekend and the main aspect of the weekend is a square aspect between Mars and Saturn but it is a heliocentric aspect so you know I've just gone through the geocentric aspects happening over the weekend none of them are that spectacular really but heliocentrically yeah this is where the where the action might be and that Mars square Saturn is potentially quite difficult it's potentially quite frustrating certainly on a collective level and in terms of what's happening in the world what we feel about the world and there may be a general sense of could be foreboding a feeling that maybe things aren't going to get better a feeling that you know we do live in a tense world where where things can go wrong and aside from the mars saturn square we've actually got a mercury Sat mercury neptune square as well so mercury is at 2726 sagittarius neptune is at 2844 pisces so with the mercury neptune square there could be a, a feeling of confusion people not quite knowing what to do or what to think and getting the wrong ideas and there is also something quite deceptive about mercury square neptune people giving messages which may be not entirely correct or are misleading i suppose this is a reminder that you know, we've only got just over a week left now, I suppose, before the American election. Uh, well, it's, it's a bit longer than a week. What's it? Ten days. And so whatever's happening over the weekend in, in the election in, in the election in the United States, it's probably not going to be fun. <laughs> Here's the helio with this heliocentric picture. Remember, the heliocentric chart is talking about the collective and i suppose when you look about look at people campaigning in an election uh, then uh, mercury square neptune and mars square saturn it all looks rather difficult and rather tense i, I, I would have said and listen to what people say people are going to be lying and distorting <laughs> Fake news. That's one way, I suppose, of looking at Mercury Square, Mercury Square Neptune. So heliocentrically, in a way, that is where the action lies over the course of a weekend. And I, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily the geocentric position of the planets that, that matter so much. Now, I did mention that on Sunday, there's moon opposite, geocentrically, there's moon opposition Saturn. And that sort of supports the fact that heliocentrically we've got mars square saturn and i do think for many of us it could be quite a frustrating weekend so we mustn't get to, too annoyed if things don't go our way as quickly as we'd uh, like them to like them to go 
Okay, so let's now look at the 12 signs. So these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for the weekend of October the 26th and 27th, 2024. Aries. Aries, it's a kind of a, a split weekend, you could say, because at the beginning of a weekend, the moon is moving through Leo and by the end of the weekend it's moving through Virgo so I think you start the weekend feeling pretty good in a way You're, you have a sense of uh, what you can do and how you can make things happen and there is a sense of your own power and so if there is, is something you'd like to do, try and do it on Saturday, particularly if it's something that's amusing, that's fun, maybe even early on Saturday. Because as the weekend progresses, things do perhaps get a little more difficult or there are at least other things that you need to, you need to be focusing on, you know, because that's when the moon goes into, that's when the moon goes into Virgo. And, and just before the moon goes into Virgo, the moon in Leo does make a square to Uranus. So I think that moon square Uranus, you could see that as a final opportunity to do something exciting and something that you really want to do. But it's possible moon square Uranus, something, something that you want to do, something that is important to you, has potentially has got a financial implication that you're not entirely comfortable with. So even on Saturday, you may be frustrated that you can't do something because you haven't got the resources, uh, in which case you perhaps have to be inventive. You know, just because you haven't got the material resources to do something, or it doesn't seem like you've got the material resources to do something, doesn't mean that you can't do it. I actually think you, you can do it, but you've just got to be imaginative. And then the moon moves into Virgo. And moon moving into Virgo for you, Aries, is perhaps about, yes, understanding your limitations, but also understanding what, what needs to be done. And if you can just calm down, not be in a hurry, to make things happen, then it may not be so bad with the moon moving into moving moon moving into Virgo because the moon it does make a sextile to the sun when it's in Virgo. It moves moves into Virgo, makes a sextile to the sun in Scorpio, and so that might mean that if you're doing things which which are sort of low key, which are also quite serious, and you feel involved with them emotionally, there can be you know, a certain sense of, of comfort that, that you are in the right place and that you are doing, doing the right things. And so, you know, that needn't, that needn't be so bad. Though, you know, things are getting more serious, um, Aries, in general. Because, you know, if you look at Mars, you know, Mars is, right now, it's going slowly. It's moving very slowly. December the 6th, it... Uh, December the 6th it goes retrograde and it's slowly moving towards an opposition with Pluto that Pluto opposition is Mars opposition Pluto okay it won't be exact for a few, for what a few more days uh, but it's getting there and so with Mars opposition Pluto you're starting to feel feel it and you're starting to realize that things are are actually quite serious and that you can't play the fool and that that uh, you do need to adopt a responsible approach and and in fact I think that other people might be starting to pick up on it because I think you are being in a way more disciplined and you're not giving away as much as you used to be there's something that you're keeping to yourself and some of the people around you may be may be picking up on that and Hopefully that's just regarded as a sign of, of your maturity. And I think you you can show real maturity over the weekend. But 
it's just important that you understand your limitations and you you know you you might start a, I mean, you might start the weekend thinking there are lots of different things you can do but then by the end of a weekend you realize there are limits and that you have to actually work within these limits Taurus so the beginning of a weekend you perhaps feel that there's nothing you you really have to do you just uh, want to be in your own space probably that means being in your own home or, or somewhere you feel comfortable and yeah there just isn't a great deal of pressure or at least you don't want pressure I mean that's that, that's really quite important to you though that doesn't mean to say that nothing is going to happen because what's what's going on is that you know Uranus has been moving through your sign for a long time Uranus is at 26 is at 26 Taurus and Uranus does move into Aries uh, soon enough sorry Gemini Uranus does Uranus does move into into Gemini soon enough but uh, at the moment Uranus is going retrograde and on Saturday the moon makes a square to Uranus so yes you want to be in an environment where you feel that you are protected where you're in control but somehow it might not quite work out like that and it may just be that you you feel you have to do something you feel that you have to assert your independence in some way and in the process of asserting your independence you create a lot of changes and you actually start to destabilize the situation that needn't be a problem it may be that's something you want to do maybe you know the way things have been is not satisfactory and you want to stir things up but if you are doing something dramatic or you or something that is somewhat unexpected you perhaps need to think through what the possible consequences might be then the moon changes sign the moon changes sign from leo to virgo and this sign change actually could be quite useful because you know moon 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 moving into virgo in fact that is a good thing and the reason moon moving into virgo is a good thing particularly for you is because you know we haven't got any planets in earth signs except for uranus and pluto but now we've got moon in virgo moon moves into virgo so there is more earth and i think you're going to feel more comfortable more grounded as the moon moves into virgo and actually i think in some respects more confident you're going to be more confident that you are aware of what you're doing and that you're aware of the implications of what you're doing and the moon when it moves into virgo it does make a a sextile to the sun and i think that's a very nice aspect moon sextile sun and that might have implications for relationships so if relationships or particular relationships have not been working out to plan then that moon sextile sun can really help ground things and I think you'll be able to relate to people on the right levels I mean I say levels in the plural um, you, know, you can relate to people in terms of providing um, something that is predictable and comfortable but at the same time with the moon in Virgo your your sense of fun is kind of activated maybe it's your earthy sense of fun which you perhaps have been out of touch with recently but you you can enjoy yourself in other people's company and at the same time you can create a sense of sort of security and balance so in general it's quite possible that sunday is going to be a better day than saturday though moon does make an opposition to saturn and the only thing i would say about moon opposition saturn is um stick to people on a one-to-one -one level don't get involved with people as a group on sunday so if you've been invited to a party or you're going to meet meet up with lots of people on sunday don't necessarily go don't necessarily feel committed if you do spend time with a large group of people in a in a group situation 
maybe you want to limit your limit your exposure to to, to to this you know okay spend 10 minutes half an hour whatever but if you spend a prolonged period of time with a group of other people you might feel um uncomfortable and it, if you if you want to deal with people it's i think overall especially on sunday it's better to deal with them sort of one to one rather than as a group or you know, whether it's a group of three people or a group of a thousand people, I don't think you're going to feel entirely comfortable, and you just feel that your 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 self-expression is being sort of hampered. So uh, it's a situation where I think that you do have a certain amount of choice. Gemini, Gemini, the main aspect this week sorry this weekend well there are probably two main aspects um from a heliocentric perspective we have got mercury square neptune from a geocentric perspective we have got mercury quincunx jupiter so you know you are trying your hardest to make sense of what's happening around you and i suppose you're trying to communicate the way you feel but it could be hard work and you know with this with this heliocentric aspect mercury square neptune um i think that there is a possibility that you feel confused that you actually don't know what's happening and you feel that you have to know what's happening you have to make some some effort to show that you know what's happening but you're not entirely confident about what you're saying so in terms of your words if if you're unsure do you really have to do you really have to say anything it may not actually be necessary so some caution could be could be could be required with that mercury square neptune Though I suppose one of the uh, sort of stereotypical picture views of a Gemini is of someone who is, you know, a liar, a con merchant. I've got my son in Gemini, so I, I don't, I don't feel I'm singling anyone out. But uh, Gemini's have got a lot to say, and they're very, they can be very good at lying and deceiving. And I don't know what kind of Gemini you are, but it's possible. But a few of you watching this might be tempted to spin all sorts of yarns um, about what's true, what's not true, and you know, are people going to believe you? Maybe people were going to believe you. people. Maybe people will believe you. But uh, is it the right thing to do? You know, sometimes, you know, the truth. You know, sometimes the truth is important, and just lying for the sake of lying is not necessarily a good thing to do. I think that might be a temptation for some Geminis, for some Geminis, um, to just feel that a lie is better than the truth. I mean, that that is certainly is a possible is a possibility. And the other aspect, you know, Mercury quincunx Jupiter, it's in a way is more of the same, because Mercury is what you're trying to say. And, you know, Gemini, Mercury's in Scorpio. Mercury is in a sign which is not naturally communicative. So it's Scorpio is, you know, it's it's a mute sign. It's it's a scorpion. It's a sign of a scorpion. Scorpions, to my knowledge, don't make much noise. At least traditionally it was thought that Scorpios, scorpions don't make much noise. So there are things you want to keep quiet about. You want to do things in a sort of a a logical and methodical way yet there is pressure to assert yourself at least on a mental and verbal way you feel you feel you just got to say something you don't feel you want to say anything perhaps but you still feel you have to say it anyway but if you do say it anyway then it might not work out and so i would have said a gemini for this weekend if in doubt, don't. <laughs> I mean, particularly on a verbal level. 
if you're not sure what whether to say something or if you're not sure whether you understand something then just keep quiet and and that might be the best approach now on sunday we have a an opposition aspect between the moon and saturn okay it might be late on sunday it it depends on your time zone but still we've got moon in virgo opposition saturn in saturn in pisces and you know this moon in virgo as far as you're concerned um, okay in itself is not so bad with the moon moving into virgo perhaps it's a time to ground yourself to really realize that it is best to say nothing it's best to seek stability wherever it might be and with that moon opposition saturn there is some pressure there there's pressure to do things that you don't want to do and that pressure might for example come from authority figures or i don't know if you're working over the weekend if you happen to be working over the weekend that's not going to be satisfactory i mean you may have to work over the weekend but if you are working over the weekend uh it may be difficult and it just may be that uh you just feel the pressure but at the same time the moon in virgo is making a sextile to the sun and that moon Vir- moon in virgo sextile the sun in scorpio i think may allow you to find a stability that deep down i think you're looking for and so it's not just about erring on the side of caution in terms of what you say but it's perhaps erring on the side of ca- side and on the side of caution in terms of what kind of activities you gravitate towards and on su- on sunday i think gemini the main thing is is to just keep it simple and if you can keep it simple and not do anything dramatic maybe the weekend can end on actually on quite a quite a stable note cancer cancer the moon is in leo to begin with and then it moves moves into virgo so saturday is to an extent a moon in leo day and if you're in the americas though by around lunch time on saturday the moon should the moon should be in virgo but then if you're in australia or new zealand then the moon doesn't move into virgo until the very early hours of of sunday so it kind of depends where you are but in terms of of your weekend it's probably best to focus your energies on the sunday rather than the saturday i think that su- that sunday is seems to be an easier day than saturday overall um on on saturday there may be things happening which you don't really want to do and you may be concerned that uh, other people have priorities that you don't necessarily share and there could be also a few sort of lingering financial issues on saturday which you perhaps have to take care of or they may suddenly make themselves felt i mean the moon is on saturday is making a square to uranus so moon square uranus may be about something happening or in terms of money or some event or some realization about money it it suddenly makes itself felt and perhaps you're uh, not necessarily too comfortable about it or it just makes things more complicated than you want them to be so that might be uh that might be something that is happening on on saturday then the moon moving into virgo it does feel more comfortable and the moon in virgo makes a sextile to the sun and moon sextile sun is a really nice aspect it makes you sort of feel comfortable and it also makes you feel useful and you have a sense that you can naturally express yourself 
in a way that is is not dramatic but at the same time is very meaningful and I think that you're going to be able to sort of tune into your natural creativity and you'll just kind of know that perhaps you're in the right place and you just don't want anything to spoil it. Could anything spoil it? Well, on Sunday, the moon does make an opposition to Saturn and that moon opposition Saturn, it might, it might be late on Sunday and with the moon opposition Saturn, there may be something holding you back Maybe it's a person. They're preventing you from doing what you want to do. Or their mere presence may annoy you. Or the things they say. Or, or the values they express. I suppose that's particularly important. I suppose if you're in, in America, when you're, you're dealing with values, people expressing their values, um, left, right and centre, and it's you can't get away from it. So... I suppose if you're a Cancerian in America, the moon opposition Saturn may have a may have a political dimension and, and you, you just just won't feel sort of comfortable with what is happening. But it may have a an interpersonal dimension, just just realizing cancer that maybe that someone is annoying you, is getting you down, is not being helpful, they're not perhaps supporting you, or you just may be aware of a just a plain difference of opinion. But moon opposition Saturn is an aspect that happens fairly regularly and it's not going to last forever. And I think if there are any disagreements or incompatibilities between you and another person, I think they should resolve themselves fairly quickly. Though it is possible with that moon opposition Saturn that you might come to the conclusion that there is someone that you really can't stand that is possible or that you don't really want in their, want in your life anymore but that's that's i think in most cases an extreme scenario and what i would perhaps encourage you to do on saturday on sunday rather is to concentrate on the fact that the moon is sextile the sun that's the aspect that matters that's the aspect that should matter that aspect is about finding inner harmony and peace and just feeling that things are running running together you can find um, you can find yourself you can you can express your creativity but in such a way that is not um, destabilizing and you don't have to worry about other people you can just just you just relax now it may be that some people can become part of this relaxation and they can help you relax and you can moon in fact moon sex of sun can often be representative of representative of good and healthy relationships and there's no reason why that can't happen but just make sure on sunday that you're with people who you are completely compatible with who you feel com completely comfortable with it's sunday is not a day for stretching yourself socially or trying your hardest to get on with people you don't like. You can you can worry about those kind of challenges at a later date. Leo. Leo, the weekend starts with the moon in late Leo. And in late Leo, the moon makes a square to Uranus. Now, this square to Uranus, I mean, needn't be such a bad thing. I mean, moon square Uranus can be actually quite quite an exciting aspect. It can be very dynamic. It can stir you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And I think that on Saturday, you can have an impact. And if you want to say something or if you want to do something and you want to get attention you feel you need to get attention on saturday then i think that that can happen of course it would help if you knew what you were doing sometimes you do something dramatic and you're not really thinking through the consequences and you you, you end up in a situation that may not be entirely desirable but 
if you get it right, and this would this would especially be the case if you feel you're in a situation where you need to get people's attention for whatever reason. Um, perhaps you're in a situation where there are people, lots of people around you, whether it's a social situation or a or a work situation. I know it's a Saturday. I know those people don't normally work on Saturday, but some people do. Whatever the situation is, you can get people to listen to you. And that can also apply whether you're, you know, if you're talking to them on the phone or, or on social media. So you, you can certainly get attention and you can have your moment in the sun if that's what you want. But of course, that may not be something that you do want. And it may be that you feel it's it's better just to uh, focus on to focus on other things and the sun which is your the sun which is of course your ruler it, it does make a biquintile to neptune and that sun biquintile neptune is is very different provides a very different kind of energy Sun by Quintal Neptune is about you not wanting attention, really. It's about you actually, at some level, wanting to perhaps become part of something else. And it may actually focus on, on your spirituality and being, yeah, being wanting to be part of something bigger than yourself. I mean, I suppose... I mean, I suppose in a way that's a secret of immortality, isn't it? I mean, if we're totally focused on ourselves and on our space, then that's going to go. And it's, you know, we're, 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 our life is, is very short and very temporary. Of course, if we think about ourselves as being part of a living process, then, of course, we can get, we can get a sense of immortality, regardless of whether or not we believe in a God. But that's... That's perhaps the challenge, one of the challenges of the sun by Quintal Neptune. And you may be consciously making the effort to create uh, an environment which has a sort of, um, sort of heightened spirituality, looking for what inspires you, which uh, something which sort of makes you feel that, yeah, that you are part of something. And that sun by Quintal Neptune can actually be quite artistic, and it can allow you to have an idea and an idea that difficult to express but you can find a way of turning an idea that idea into something real so i think that sun by quintal neptune could be useful provided you don't get involved in anything too practical especially on saturday if if you try, try to be too practical and too precise, then you might kind of lose your bearings a bit. But still, I don't want to take away from the fact that the moon is making that square to Uranus. I think you can make an impact in terms of other people. And it could, I suppose, be in a work or business setting if that's happening on a Saturday. So there is that opportunity. But at the same time, your priorities might be elsewhere with that sun by Quintal Neptune. I'm talking about that art or or spirituality and then the moon leaves leo and it moves into virgo and moon moving into virgo i mean virgo is a in some respects is a very different sign from leo it's it's an earth sign and it can be connected with money that is true and you know some leos with the moon moving into virgo may feel that money is an important matter, something that they do need to concentrate on, and that, uh, you know, with the moon does make a sex... Moon does make a sextile to the sun, though. So, moon in, moon in Virgo making a sextile to the sun, sun is your ruler. It may just be that, you know, there are concerns about money, but moon sextile sun may allow you to be relaxed about money in a new way. Not necessarily because anything has happened, but because perhaps because you're able to see money in perspective and you can, you know, that's I suppose that's always the issue with money. You have to see it in the right way. And I suppose people who are people who don't have financial problems are very often people who have the right perspective on money. And 
Moon Sextile Sun, I think, does help to give you that perspective. And so once you've got that perspective, Moon Sextile Sun, yeah, the Moon does move on to making up, make, to make to to making an opposition to Saturn. And so Moon opposition Saturn may be a time when you're you start to become aware of some kind of financial complexity or something you didn't really want to deal with. But at the same time, the Moon is sextile the Sun. The Moon has having made the sextile to the Sun makes the opposition to Saturn. So maybe that sextile Moon sextile Sun is just going to give you a sense of um, what to, what to look for and. Even if things are not perfect financially, I think that you you should be able to get things in perspective. But maybe it's got nothing to do with money. Maybe money isn't an issue. And you know, with the moon moving into Virgo at a time when I think that your your spirituality is is heightened. I think that you can perhaps see the. You can see the supernatural, you can see the divine, you know, all around you. And with the moon in Virgo, it's it's about the earth and it's about the earth on which you live. And perhaps that's something that you're able to you're able to tune into. Final point about relationships. I wouldn't worry too much about relationships this weekend. And I wouldn't have any big hopes about relationships you know because i think that there is some danger that you might get the wrong idea about people um not necessarily from a close romantic perspective just people in general some danger you get confused you misunderstand someone or you you interpret someone's actions in the wrong way that is that is possible and you might make an error of judgment. And so perhaps, Leo, over the weekend, you should try to be as as self-sufficient as possible. Virgo. Virgo, this weekend, the moon moves into your sign. Quite when it moves into your sign, depends. Depends on your time zone. It may be that the moon moves into your sign I don't know, around, it could be late morning on, late morning on Saturday if you're in in the Americas, that's possible. It could be, uh, it could be early morning on, very early morning on Sunday in the Australias. So uh, yeah, it, uh, in Australia and New Zealand, sorry. Um, but one way or another, the moon is going to be moving into your, it, it, the moon is going to be moving into Virgo. And... I think, by and large, that's useful. And I think it's also comforting because, you know, Virgo, you're an earth sign. You you like to have a bit of earth around you. And the moon moving into into Virgo just gives you a sense that you can actually start to touch the world around you. And you feel, you're going to feel that things are more more real and at the same time when the moon moves into virgo it it makes a sextile to the sun and that moon sextile sun is is just quite nice it's 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 about harmony it's about things running together it it sort of enhances the life force and you're able to sort of express yourself in a way that is just comfortable and people listen to you so I would have thought in most cases that Sunday is going to be a better day than Saturday, provided provided you're, you're careful who you mix with. Because the problem is that on Sunday we have an opposition aspect between the moon and Saturn. And yes, the moon does make a sextile to the sun, but it then goes on to make an opposition to Saturn. So Saturn is in in Pisces, which is your opposite sign. So moon opposition Saturn can actually represent uh, relationship issues. And it can be about you feeling that 
someone else is perhaps preventing you from doing what you want to do, or you're with someone who makes you feel self-conscious. It's very different from that moon sextile, the moon sextile sun. So perhaps you need to sort of identify where that situation is. You know, who is it that is preventing you from being yourself? Where are they? Um, do you feel that you really need to be close to them? Maybe you do. Maybe, I suppose you could say the moon opposition Saturn could be constructive because it could be someone who is, I suppose, um, wiser than you, uh, perhaps more authoritative from you, who is giving you giving you an idea about you know what you should and shouldn't be doing. But I just be, just uh, yeah, choose choose your company carefully. I would have said, especially on especially on Sunday. Now there are other things going on relating to. To, relating to Mercury. Mercury is, of course, your ruler. And Mercury, heliocentrically, Mercury is square Neptune. Geocentrically, Mercury is quincunx Jupiter. And both those aspects give us, give us the concept of feeling that something is something needs to be said or something needs to be done and you're not quite sure what it is and you may just feel you just have to go ahead and say it or you just have to go ahead and keep thinking about it you you think about something and the more you think about it in many respects the more confused you are and you're not quite sure what to do so there is perhaps some danger of your brain going into overdrive and this might not be useful. And so when the brain goes into overdrive, this might be a time with the moon moving into Virgo, especially on Sunday when you you need to perhaps take action to slow your brain down. It might be a good idea to take some exercise moon in Virgo or get out, in the, out into the open air. That's something that Virgos very often like to do doing something to do with, I don't know, the earth, with um, the soil, plants, going for a, if you if you have the opportunity, going for, going for a walk in nature. That might be a might be a possibility. Of course, if you take exercise, provided you don't overdo it, that can um, that can kind of help slow your brain down if, if the body is doing some work. So that that might be a good way of. Um, dealing with the situation now going back to relationships you know i've said that there's on sunday the moon is opposition saturn also mercury is quincunx jupiter on sunday so mercury represents you but jupiter might well represent another person because jupiter is ruler of pisces and pisces is your opposite sign so mercury quincunx jupiter may indicate an apparent incompatibility between you and another person. I say an apparent compatibility, not a, necessarily a real incompatibility, but there just seems to be a sense in which you and another person don't quite click. And as it's a quincunx, maybe there's some work to be done. It's not just a, say, just a question of saying, oh, you don't get on with this person, they don't get on with you. It may be you need to actually look at the area of incompatibility and sort of explore it and perhaps um, work it through and perhaps find some resolution uh, to it. Libra. Libra, you are in, in some respects, uh, quite an unusual state of mind. Uh, you are thinking about lots of things. Uh, yeah, a lot of things to think about. And a lot of these things that you might be wanting to think about uh, might well be somewhat um, otherworldly. I mean, there is a spiritual vibe overall for everyone this weekend. But I think that you might, uh, you might really start to pick up on that spiritual vibe and you might just feel that there is something out there that is perhaps something that you maybe want to get in touch with. I mean, it may not be anything supernatural. It just may be the 
the full extent of who you are and your unconscious. And you know, there may be moments where you question the sort of a reality in front of you. Is it real? Is it not real? What is the difference between what you can see in the real world and what is going on in your mind? And so that, I know that might sound a little bit uh, a bit scary. I, I don't mean to be scary. We all have these moments where we start to see things in a different way. And, you know, that might be you. But because of that, I think the, the only thing to say is you don't want to make things more complicated than they actually are. Because of this sensitivity, your, your na- this natural sensitivity, which seems to be coming out at the moment this weekend, you don't want to you don't want to dull it or confuse it so for example i would not i would not suggest that you drink alcohol or take drugs i mean take i mean recreational drugs this weekend because i don't think that's what you need you need to be as sober as you can because otherwise things might get uh, they might get rather confusing and you might not quite know how to respond to things and this is a situation which will continue through the weekend and then you know over the on sunday we've got the moon starting to make a the moon is starting to make a square to to venus and that that moon moon in virgo square venus in sagittarius that also could confuse you you know you you might know not know what to think you might uh you might just be unclear about what is true and what is just plain fantasy and ideally Libra you'll just be able to exist in 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 this state of not knowing for sure because you nothing is for certain and so if you if you can can exist in that kind of um, kind of world then you know I think that would be fine, but just don't make things more complicated than they have to be. For example, by drinking or taking recreational drugs, that would not be a good not be a good idea. And additionally, Libra, Venus is starting to make a square to Saturn. Now that Venus square Saturn is not exact until next week, but I think you're going to be feeling it. The reason you're going to be feeling it is because the moon is making a square to Venus. Moon is making an opposition to Saturn. So the moon is kind of bringing that, bringing that Venus square Saturn t- in, into, into awareness. It's doing it early. And so with Venus square Saturn, there is a challenge here to really be as real as you can be. Yes, there is uh, there is a sense in which your imagination and your spirituality is moving in a particular direction, and I think that could be very healthy. But at the same time, you don't want to overdo it. And I think it's you know by the end of a weekend, I think you should be considering your health and looking after your health and considering and consider. What might be undermining your th- un- undermining you health wise right now? And I'm, again, I, when I, whenever I talk about health, I'm, I'm not talking about anything medical. I must emphasize, I'm sort of talking about this in a sort of a lifestyle sense. I must make that clear. But what could be undermining your sense of well being? And it's just that you are more sensitive than usual. And there may it may be that there's just something about it could be about something something about your living space. It could be about the people you're with, um, or perhaps the people you're not with. But somehow it's not it's not helpful. And but on the positive side, it does seem that there is something you can do. And you know, Venus is in Sagittarius. Let's not forget that. So Venus in Sagittarius is you know, Sagittarius is a a fast moving i mean no, it's not a fast moving sign signs don't really move fast but it's um sagittarians can move from one place to another and it may be with venus and sagittarius square saturn you reach the conclusion that 
you've got two choices. You're in one place or another place. You're with one group of people or you're with another group of people. You've got that choice. And that Venus square Saturn is perhaps making that choice very stark. And perhaps you do have to make a decision. There's one one decision makes you feel healthier and more comfortable. The other decision, which may of course be the non-decision, maybe the status quo, just uh, gives you more of the same. And it may not be something you should be content should be persisting with so overall libra there are potentially a few changes that need to be made if you want to um boost your sense of um harmony and well-being scorpio scorpio mars is starting to move towards an opposition of Pluto. Mars is moving slowly at the moment, but it's getting there. Soon enough, that Mars-Pluto opposition is, 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 going to be, is going to be exact. Now, as far as you know, the, precise, the precise day when that Mars opposition when that Mars opposition Pluto is exa- when that Mars opposition Pluto is exact, uh, just uh, just to give you an idea, in fact, it's um, it's not. I mean, it's not for another week. It's because you know Mars is moving slowly, but it's not until Sunday week, November the third. But it's getting there, and you know, you look. Mars is now less than three degrees from Pluto, and so with that Mars-Pluto opposition. It does seem, Scorpio, that there are things that you are starting to take seriously. Perhaps you hadn't taken them seriously before. And you are aware, perhaps, of the issues of power. You know, who has the power? Who doesn't have the power? And that's what Mars opposition Pluto is is perhaps thinking about. And it's not... It's this Mars opposition Pluto. I don't want to go into too much detail now because... Basically, I should be talking about it every single day from from now on, between now and beginning of November, and that's not something I can do. But just 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 track that Mars opposition Pluto and think about issues of power. Who is who's in power? Who's in power? Who's in con- who who's in control? And in terms of you protecting and defending yourself, how much power do you want to do you, do you want to put into put do you want to put into it? It may be with Mars opposition Pluto that you might overdo things or you might take things too seriously or you might overinterpret. And that can be an issue, overinterpreting. You see something which in itself is relatively harmless, but you decide that this is something really important that you have to act on as, you know, as, as soon as possible. Now, that's that's a general picture. So as far as the weekend is concerned, um, the moon is you know starts a weekend in Leo, ends a weekend in Virgo. So I think at the beginning of a weekend with a moon in Leo, you might feel that you somehow have to establish your presence you need to do something to make sure that people that people can notice you and it just might feel the right thing to do but the moon does make a square to uranus so with the moon making a square to uranus you know you you can't get on with everyone and there are going to be certain people who i suppose you grate with and uh, you know, that comes with the nature of you know moon moon square, moon square Uranus. Of course, Uranus in Taurus, your opposite sign, and some people are annoying, and it may just feel that some people are sort of restricting you and are preventing you from doing what you really want to do. And I think it's a situation where you just have to let it go. Just uh, don't worry about it too much, and perhaps it's just important not to rise to the bait. Then the moon moves into Virgo and moon moving into Virgo. Yeah, Virgo is a sign that that relates well to Scorpio. Scorpio, Virgo, you know, they have a natural 
connection with each other. They don't have any real conflict of interest. And the moon in Virgo, it makes a sextile to the sun in Scorpio. You know, and so moon sex, sun sextile moon, that's just a feeling of great, of just great comfort. Um, and being comfortable actually with people, with the right group of people. You can just, you know, you if you're going to some social gathering on Saturday, I think you're going to feel relatively comfortable. I, I don't think there's going to be any pressure and there's going to be just a general sort of sense of sense of harmony and nothing has to be done. And at the same time, you're not going to be pressurized too much. And so maybe the weekend is, is it's particularly Sunday, is a good opportunity to connect with people who who perhaps share your priorities and who share who who share your values i think values do matter and who have have a similar sense of you know where where the world should be going where society should be going that might be political i mean people who are on your on the same political wavelength as you i mean some scorpios can actually take their politics quite seriously and get quite upset if they come across people who are on a, who have different values but uh, shared values with that moon sextile sun I think could be could be something that is you know very useful but I mean I don't think Scorpio you need to get too involved with any one person I think it's more about other people if you get involved with any one person uh, that may not work quite so well and I think there has been this issue over the last few days where you have wanted to keep things to certain things to yourself and you haven't wanted to completely open up. And I, when you're with a lot of people, that that's not an issue. But when you're with one person, that might become more of an issue. So th- this message that I've been giving over the last few days, I would repeat it, you know, from a social point of view it's about people you know as a group um with people who you get on with but you don't have to spend too much time with with any one person because i think that that might be, in the end become a li- uh, become difficult and unsatisfactory you know not least because there are limits to what you want to reveal sagittarius sagittarius you you know you start the weekend with the moon in with the moon in leo and you know that's that's really nice having the moon in leo and you get a sense that you're in a world which is um exciting and interesting and there is there are things going on that uh, perhaps you want to be part of and so Saturday, in many respects, looks looks quite straightforward. And, okay, you don't want to take things too far because it's possible that if you really embrace what's happening around you, if you try to, if you try to do too much exploring, I suppose you might find that your own your own routines and even rituals get sort of disturbed a little i mean that is that is possible but but i wouldn't worry about it too much you know the moon in, moon's in leo venus is in sagittarius the north node is in aries i mean i know it's not quite a grand trine in fire signs but i think you still get that feel of a grand trine in fire signs you know things are happening you'd certainly have that spark but the moon does change sign and it moves from Leo into Virgo. So moon moving into Virgo is a different energy. I think that you'll perhaps have an enhanced sense of responsibility with the moon in Virgo. You'll perhaps realise, Sagittarius, that there are specific things that you need to do that you want to do and you're going to want to do them you know, straight away, even though it is Sunday, a day of rest, but you're going to want to get on with it. And 
you you'll you'll have a sense in which your ambitions will start to develop and you'll start to get a picture about what you want and it will become it will become clear that maybe you need some outside support some outside help and i think if you need outside support outside help you should be able to get it and i think it's just important then that you're very clear about what you want yeah clarity does matter and you have to be careful how you express this because you know there is a quincunx between mercury and jupiter on, on sunday and you know mercury is the communication planet jupiter is of course your ruler and so getting your message across is certainly possible with mercury quincunx jupiter but it's not a given it's so easy to try to say to you try to say too many things at once and it just doesn't come out right so communication is i think on sunday and talking and writing it is an art form it's something that needs needs to be structured it it, it needs discipline it can't just be the first thing that comes out of your mind it's you know that's very nice i know you're a sagittarius i know you like to be spontaneous but spontaneity has its it has its problems and so if there's something you want to say if you want to engage other people's support then you have to do it in the right way and it's something that has to be worked upon and maybe the first thing you say won't be the right thing and you're going to have to qualify yourself and then you're going to have to quali qualify yourself again maybe by the third time of qualification you will have made yourself clear but if you keep trying to qualify yourself of course you're not you're, you're just not going to get anywhere so get, getting the message out and getting it getting it properly formatted is going to be very important also mercury quincunx jupiter that case can that could say something about relationships because you know mercury is ruler of gemini mercury which is your opposite sign so mercury can represent the other person so mercury quincunx jupiter can be about a situation where you and, and another person you don't feel entirely comfortable with each other and it's not a disaster it's not a situation that can't be resolved but don't expect yourself to just get on with people straight away um, it is going to need i think in many cases a bit of work capricorn capricorn you do seem to be aware of a change you could just feel it there seems to be a change in the air maybe other people don't notice it but you you believe that it is important and perhaps you want to make other people aware of it you know it's not necessarily about your world or your private world it's just about the world around you you can just feel it and that may have some impact on the way you are and your general sense of happiness over the course of a weekend so it perhaps gives you a, a sense of seriousness which people other people may or may not appreciate and it it means that your ability to just sort of be light and free and just uh, taking things you know one moment every moment as it comes you know I, i don't think that's really for you because you understand that there is perhaps a little bit of urgency again it's not about it's not an urgency about you it's just an, an urgency about the world in which you live and i think that that is that is just something that in general that you just seem to be you do you do seem to be quite quite aware of and you know on saturday as the moon finishes moving through leo you know that that sense of some i don't know almost a little bit of foreboding is going to be there um again it's not about you but just the way society is moving that foreboding the moon in leo making a square to uranus could could just sort of stir things up for you you just feel that 
things are things are happening out there. You don't hundred percent understand them, but yeah, you you do know they're they're important. So the moon moving into Virgo, moving out of Leo into Virgo, may for you Capricorn be be something of a relief, because you know the moon moves into Virgo. There's a sense now with the moon moving into Virgo of things being more real. You know, Virgo is an earth sign. You know, Capricorn is an earth sign. You you enjoy the reality of the moon and moon and Virgo. Okay, moon and Virgo can shine light on things that aren't always particularly pleasant, but at least it's all real. And that's the way Capricorn likes it. And you you, you have a sense of, with moon moving into Virgo, of of what is possible. And the moon in Virgo makes a sextile to the sun in Scorpio and moon sextile sun it's it's a really nice aspect you so I think you know as the weekend progresses it may be that some of your foreboding starts to dissipate maybe because you get you start to get a sense of perspective um, you perhaps understand that you know whatever happens in the world there's not much you can do about it you're just uh a temporary occupant of this world and while you're there things happen and uh, you're born and you die and then you leave, you know whatever however you leave the world you know that's the way it is and this is just this is just what it what it's like to be a human being but with the moon with the moon in virgo sextile the sun you know you you perhaps find it easier to relate not just to the world but to to other people there's just a sense of a sense of harmony and other people may may seem uh, more reasonable than they had done in the past with moon sextile the sun so moon sextile the sun may be a good opportunity to to perhaps to concentrate on particular relationships and to ground them in something and create a situation where even if there are incompatibilities that they can be dealt with. And the moon, having made the sextile to the sun, it makes an opposition to Saturn. Now, indeed, the last aspect of the weekend is a is an oppos- is the moon opposition Saturn. And I suppose I have to say that this weekend, heliocentrically, we have got Mars square Saturn. So we've got Mars square Saturn heliocentrically. We've got moon opposition Saturn geocentrically. Now, I still think that Sunday is going to be a good day. I, I, I think it can be. But with that moon opposition Saturn, you have to be on your guard. And of course, with a heliocentric Mars square Saturn, you do have to be on your guard. There are going to be things going on that might be frustrating and you might reach a point where you're actually, you're disappointed with people. Some people might not fulfill your expectations, but maybe you're expecting too much. That That is a possibility. You've got to accept people as they are and not try to imagine that they could can go beyond their own capabilities. And I think if you imagine that and you realise that and you tone down your expectations, the moon opposition Saturn may not be such a bad thing. Now, the heliocentric square between Mars and Saturn, it may not be personal to you. In fact, it probably won't be, but in it perhaps is more about going back to what I was saying right at the beginning of this piece on on Capricorn, you perhaps seeing what's happening in the world, and I think the Mars square Saturn is perhaps just going to to emphasise it, and you can see things that that other people can't, and you can perhaps see that things are just, things are not right, and you're going to you're going to perhaps have an ability to see bad things better than other people. Maybe other people will look the other way, but you're not going to look the other way because there's something very realistic about Capricorn, realistic and down to earth. So it is a weekend that is complicated. At least it's complicated in terms of what you are observing. 
but I don't think it's necessarily complicated in terms of your own life and your own immediate sphere of influence and your own interests. It's perhaps not complicated in that sense, but I think you are going to realise that you are you are living in a complicated and difficult and unstable world, and I think you, you are clear about that. But I think you you were also able to get the whole thing um, in perspective. Aquarius. Aquarius, Mars is square Saturn heliocentrically, and that's what I was just been telling Capricorn, and that Mars square Saturn heliocentrically might have an impact on you. I mean, I know it's a heliocentric aspect, not a geocentric aspect, but uh, with Mars square or Saturn, there could be things taking place that that really annoy you. And, you know, I, I understand that the average Aquarian tries to keep their cool, but some things may just feel that they are somewhat unacceptable. And you might then be thinking, well, what are you going to do about it? And there may actually be nothing you can do about it. But it's just important to sort of understand what is happening. At least it's going to be important to to inform yourself. But, you know, that's all perhaps a bit sort of high level, sort of pie in the sky. You know, what about what's going on down here? Well, the moon is moving from Leo until Virgo, from, from Leo until, from Leo to Virgo. So Saturday, that's when the changeover happens for most of us. And so with the moon moving through Leo, I think it continues to be a time when you are aware of the impact that people have on you. You live in a social world. Uh, it's pop populated by particular individuals who do have an impact on you. And the moon moving through Leo is making a square aspect to Uranus. And so that moon square Uranus may mean that on Saturday, certain people may be somewhat irritating and I suppose it's possible that you may be irritating to them or it may be that you are in some way restricting their freedom perhaps and that sort of links also with the heliocentric Mars square Saturn if you take the heliocentric Mars square Saturn you could say well if you're Saturn you're trying to control Mars and Mars might represent other people and what they are trying to do and if you don't like something if you don't want something to happen then you you can perhaps stop it stop it happening but uh in the process you might uh i won't say make enemies but you might um you might not do your popularity um any any good so moon does move into move from leo into virgo moon moving into virgo for Aquarians makes you does make you quite serious it makes you really want to concentrate on the things that matter and you're helped by the fact that the, that the moon is making a sextile to the sun so Sunday's moon sextile sun looks as if it actually can be very useful and with moon sextile sun you can come to perhaps a new understanding of other people maybe it's saying that trying to understand other people just requires a little bit of work and effort and with moon sextile sun you notice the details that the matter in terms of other people's personality you understand what makes people tick what motivates them and that enables you to i think be be a lot more effective so it could be Aquarius, that relationships do need to be worked on this weekend and you shouldn't just make assumptions about people and just say, well, that's it, people can't change. Well, maybe maybe they can change and maybe you have to be a little more uh, tolerant and flexible, which could be, I mean, that could be hard work. I mean, Venus, Venus is making a square to Saturn 
Now that Venus square Saturn is not exact until early next week, but it's still there. It's it's getting closer. And in fact, on Sunday, the moon makes a square to Venus, moon makes an opposition to Saturn. And I think with with Venus square Saturn, I think it's going to be very important that Aquarius, you ask yourself, how do you occur to other people? Don't worry too much about what people are doing to you, what impact people are having on, having on you. Think about it in terms of the other way around and ask yourself whether you're being reasonable. And it may be that you're being unfair or you're not giving people enough space. And if you allowed people to express themselves more and if you perhaps are not so judgmental I'm not saying you are judgmental I'm just saying it's a possibility I mean I suppose that's the thing with astrology I've got to look at I've got all these there are all these things going on and you have to sort of look at all sorts of possibilities but one possibility of this Venus square Saturn might be that you are judgmental but maybe something about the way you're presenting yourself even if you're not consciously aware of it that is closing people down is, is preventing them from really expressing themselves and I suppose that could be particularly important in terms of of close relationships but you now that Venus square Saturn uh, is a factor and I I think that uh, you need to perhaps try to put yourself in other people's shoes I think you could really benefit from that Pisces Pisces the moon is eventually going to move into Virgo. So it starts a weekend in Leo, then it moves into Virgo. And so that might suggest that the social side of things is going to start to become important with, with, the, moon moving into your, with the moon moving into your opposite sign. And so when the moon moves into Virgo, the first thing it does is it makes a sextile to the sun. And I'm talking more sort of Sunday from Saturday, by the way. So the moon makes moon making a sextile to the sun is it's it's a really nice aspect, and you know this does give you a chance to put relationships on the right footing and perhaps to realize understand what you have in common with other people and perhaps you you know you have the same priorities and you have uh, you know the same likes and dislikes and you know a dislike can be a a great uh, uniter so if you and someone else find that you both dislike the same thing then you've got something in common might sound negative but it actually can be can be can be very useful and so uh, do give you do give yourself a chance to get to know people with moon moon sextile sun and dr- tr- and also try to sort of get to know their their particular perspective and you know if possible you know have as much respect as possible as you as you can respect does matter you know even if you're dealing with someone who you don't agree with or they're not your normal kind of person um even if you feel that you might be superior to them, you've still got to show them respect. Now, there is an aspect this weekend. Mercury is quincunx Jupiter. And that also says something about relationships. At least it can do, because you know Jupiter's your ruler. Mercury rules Virgo, your opposite sign. And so Mercury, quinc- Mercury quincunx Jupiter can be about... Uh, People who you don't entirely get on with. People who you're almost there. You know that you, you you know you've got something to say with, to another person. You know you you've got some common ground, but common ground is not total. And you you have to decide how best to respond to the situation. It it does seem to require a bit of work. And it's, uh, yeah, the dog's barking. Uh, the dog was barking a lot yesterday because there were three, it was looking at three deer. But now it's just someone walking down the street, walking in her direction, and she finds that highly offensive. But anyway, with this Mercury Quintal, Mercury Quincunx Jupiter, you uh, 
Mercury Quincunx Jupiter, you are aware of the things that make you and the reasons why you and someone else might disagree. But it's not total. It's not total disagreement. There is common ground here. And it's a question of finding that common ground and perhaps accepting uh, accepting your differences. And this Mercury Quincunx Jupiter may also apply to an existing relationship. It may be that if you're getting to know someone, you start to realize something about them which you're not entirely comfortable with. And you have to you have to take on board this piece of new information and then make a decision. But I, th- I suppose it's good, this Mercury Quintun- Quincunx Jupiter, because it allows al- it allows you to sort of see the whole person. And it works both ways. It may be that this is a chance for someone else to see the whole you. Yeah. They might not like the whole you, but I suppose if everyone knows who they are, who they're dealing with, then you could say that they're in a better better position to uh, to make decisions. One final point I want to say is that Venus is making, starting to make a square to Saturn. And there are a number of ways of looking at that, that Venus square Saturn. Now you could say Venus square Saturn, it's just more about relationships because Venus is the planet of relationships. It's square Saturn. You might say, well, that's not so good. <laughs> but on the other hand, you might say, well, with Venus square Saturn, you can be you can be realistic and it allows you to control how you present yourself. And this is a reminder that Saturn is in Pisces. And Saturn's been in Pisces for some time now. It's been been in Pisces for well, the best part of two years. And so it is quite a controlling force. Venus is about how you present yourself, perhaps to other people, and perhaps to the world at large, and you can actually control how you present yourself. And I think that actually can be very effective. And giving giving the impression over the next, I don't know, few days that uh, you know what you're, you're doing, that everything is controlled, even even the way you the way you dress, the way you present yourself, it's all under your control. And that, that might give a boost to your overall overall power and it might allow you to, may I just allow you to get your way and uh, to be taken seriously. I mean, you're always taken seriously, but to be taken uh, even more seriously. Okay, having done the 12 signs, I want to consider the e. Ching. So I asked the question, what is the weekend going to be like for those watching the I Ching section of this video? Now, the first hexagram I got was hexagram 64. Now, I don't think that this section on I Ching is going to be very long because before completion doesn't move. It's it's a, it's it's a locked hexagram, and so being a locked hexagram, this may indicate, despite everything I've said about this weekend astrologically, that I Ching is saying, well, maybe not a lot is going to happen because there are no moving lines. So before completion, symbolically, rep- obviously, well, represents a task that isn't finished. Um, the I Ching talks a lot about crossing rivers in terms of before completion. It's about crossing a river, but we are not there yet. So, and and it's not moving, no moving line. So we're in mid process, and the I Ching, you know, asks the question: Do we actually have the strength and the subtlety to get to the other side? Because Crossing a river is is clearly a dangerous venture, and 
all sorts of bad things can happen. Uh, obviously, we can get sucked under. I mean, that's that's the worst thing that can happen. And so, there may be the decision: might it be a good idea to turn back? Do we have the strength to move forward? But I think because we've got everything locked, no no moving lines. I don't think we're going to be inclined to turn back. I don't think we're going to be inclined to move. To, well, we'd like to move forward, but I think it's going to be really, really difficult. And, and so perhaps we have to consider if we are feeling a little stuck, why are we stuck? Uh, what do we need to get to the other side of the bank? And I don't think that we can progress with our existing resources right now we certainly can't i don't think we're going to i don't think we're going to make much progress this weekend because it is locked i mean maybe that just says it's just a weekend where things are shut down over the weekend it's just difficult difficult to get help difficult to get advice um difficult to make progress and so perhaps the advice here is well we need to perhaps wait until monday before continuing whatever is whatever we're trying to work on and if we do decide to keep moving forward you know we have to consider we have to consider some of the risks and maybe we have to consider who we are if we are someone who is strong and determined and we've got the resources then we'll get to the other side if we are weak we're coming to this we're coming into this position in, in into this condition from a from a fairly weak point of view, we just well, from, from, we just don't have it. We just don't have the resources. And maybe we should find out. Find can we find a way of can we find a way of turning back? Is it possible? But nothing's going to be decided this weekend. But I do feel that we are we that there is a sense of being a little stuck in terms of a particular task that we are. Try, we are trying to complete now there is a nuclear hexagram here this is a hexagram in the middle of the hexagram which might give us um, some some added information but when you do when you do when you look at the nuclear hexagram of before completion we get to uh, hexagram 63 which is after completion before completion because the nuclear hexagram of before completion is after completion uh, and the nuclear hexagram of after completion is before completion and so underlying this after completion yeah there's something we want to complete but after completion is almost asking ourselves why do we want to do it so it's asking ourselves to Okay, you're in this situation. You're 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 trying to cross the river. You're neither one place nor the other. What are you actually aiming for? What happens if you do if you were to cross the river? Maybe that's part of a problem. The reason why you might be stuck is because you haven't thought it through. You haven't thought about what happens when you get to the other bank. Because when you get to the other bank, that doesn't mean to say that all your problems are immediately sorted out. They're not. Because when you get to our, when you get to the other bank, you have a whole new set of problems because you are in in unfamiliar territory, and unfamiliar territory brings its own chaos. So perhaps this uh, this stage before completion may actually be quite useful because it gives you a chance to work out why you are trying to do whatever you are trying to do. Why are you doing it? what were your hopes for when you get to the other side uh, to get get to the other side and uh, perhaps it's a last chance to reconsider and then maybe next week you have to make a decision do you go forward or do you go back obviously you can't stay in the middle of a river that is not a good place to be i mean that's asking for trouble okay let's uh, let's now look at uh, pierre trudeau now i don't i'm not in canada um I live about sort of I think 150 miles from the uh, Canadian border, so I, I live. Well, I suppose I live relatively close to Canada, but uh, um, I've never been to Canada. I've never crossed that border, um, so uh, and I don't really know much about Canada. What I do know about Canada 
at the moment. Maybe things have changed while I was making the video. But what I do know about Canada is that Pierre Trudeau is the Prime Minister and that he's got, he's under a lot of pressure. And there are calls within his own party for him to resign. Uh, apparently he is deeply unpopular in the country. Uh, he is, he does not have as I understand it, he does not have a majority in the Canadian House of Commons, correct me if I'm wrong, and he's relying on the support of another party, and that's support of that party is, that party just made some conditions, I believe, about having to put up pensions, for example, by 10%, is that right? Got that right? I don't know. Um, so it's all looking a bit tenuous, but he has said that he wants to stay in power, and that, that he's going to, you know, take the party through to the elections whenever they are and I think the elections don't have to be until next year so what I wanted to do was just you know look at what's happening what's happening in his chart when do I think the you know the real sort of period of crisis actually is and and are we looking at it both from a Western and a Vedic perspective? Because his Vedic chart is, is, is there is a lot going on, I think. Well, well, there are a couple of quite important things, certainly two very important things going on in his Vedic chart, which which we should be aware of. So uh, turning to, uh, OK, so we'll, we'll start off with Trudeau's natal chart. Um, usual, I mean, I've looked at this chart quite a few times. I don't want to say too much about it, but the main points are he's got Saturn on the Midheaven. Uh, Saturn on the Midheaven is it's good for leadership. You you can't deny that. And I suppose he's helped by the fact that his father was a, a Canadian, was also a Canadian Prime Minister, well, unless you take the view that his father was Fidel Castro, but I, I'm not going to go down that road. But uh, Saturn, Saturn's on his so Saturn's Saturn's on the mid heaven. You know that can be just the sign of a leader, um, and potentially quite an authoritarian leader. Saturn on Saturn on the mid heaven, and he has Mercury Jupiter a Mercury Jupiter conjunction in Sagittarius. Um, that is something we very much have to be aware of at the moment. Uh, particularly that Mercury, as we'll be seeing very soon. And so that Mercury-Jupiter conjunction in Sagittarius, I suppose that's someone who can give, who can talk a lot. Uh, he's good at communicating, whatever you think of him. OK, Mercury is in, Mercury in Sagittarius has its own problems, um, you know, can jump to conclusions, can, can misunderstand the situation, that is possible. But he's got... Uh, He's got Moon in Leo, Trine Jupiter. Moon Trine Jupiter is, you know, it's a nice aspect. And so, you know, there are some good things in his chart. And his Mars, his Mars is important. Um, I think particularly in terms of what is happening at the moment. His his Mars is at 2935 Pisces and it's sort of opposition Pluto. Uh, so M M Mars 2935 Pisces is conjunct Skeet, that fixed star, connected with accidents and shipwrecks and not a great place for Mars to be and it's also in the 8th house in the 8th house uh, I suppose it can be sort of quite sort of intense and power hungry we don't but it's perhaps Mars in Pisces represents a side of, of, of Justin Trudeau but we don't normally see I mean I suppose there's a there's the image of Justin Trudeau when he became I suppose when he became Prime Minister in sort of what it, was it, a long time was it 2015 or something when he became Prime Minister this sort of young leader new approach uh, you know he, the press was saying lots of nice things about him you know we didn't really see that Mars in Pisces um, in the 8th house opposition Pluto but someone whose power is very important to him he wants to hang on Mars opposition Pluto. Plus, he's got Saturn on the midheaven. And he's got Venus square Saturn. I think that Venus square Saturn, well, in fact, he's got grand tri grand trine in, war in air signs. Saturn, Venus, Pluto. I would have said, you could say that, and the North Node, uh, 
North, Venus North Node conjunction. Very controlling, very controlling of how he presents himself. That there isn't much that's uh, very. There isn't really much that's particularly natural about that trine. It, it, it's, it's really thinking about structure and the message and how you, how he, how he presents himself, how he controls people. And I suppose Venus represents. You could say at some level that represents the people is is his image and how he presents himself to the Canadian people. So anyway, that's that's his chart, and I'm sure there are you know there are more things I could I could I could be saying there, and. So one question before I look at his transits is how does he actually relate to to Canada the country in which he is prime minister of so here's the Canada chart I think is that the dominion chart I've gone for July the 1st 1867 at midnight and so the question would be how does Justin Trudeau occur to Canada and you know, it's not all bad. I mean, I understand a lot of you watching this don't think much of Justin Trudeau, but you can see how he became Prime Minister of Canada. It's not just the fact that his father was was Pierre, was Pierre Trudeau. I mean, if if we if that midnight chart is correct and if Canada has sixteen Aries rising, that means that Trudeau's moon is on Canada's ascendant. I mean, that's really nice. I mean, he relates to the country. And his son, his son, his, his son, you know, he was born on Christmas Day. His son, son at three degrees Capricorn is on Canada's mid heaven. So there's a, just a, a natural connection with the country and where the country feels it's going. I don't know you might not want to hear that at the moment, but I think there is, a, there is an argument for that. But in Canada... The moon, the, the moon is at twenty. The Canadian moon is at twenty-eight fifty Gemini, and that moon may say something about the Canadian people. And Mars, his Mars is square the moon, and in, indeed his Mar, his Pluto is square the moon, and that that might mean that at some stage, his popularity takes a dive as that Mars starts to reveal itself. And I think that is actually the key, a key point about Justin Trudeau. I think that when he became prime minister, no one saw that Mars in Pisces on the eighth house. That the power-hungry element of Justin Trudeau was not noticed by the Canadian people. That intense dark side of him wasn't there. wasn't wasn't You know, you know he's he's won a lot of elections, but now it's becoming apparent. And We'll soon see why it might be becoming apparent, but uh, Mars is squaring that now. It really is squaring the moon, and I think this is he's now starting to grate. Uh, if you're Canadian, you might regard that as just stating the obvious, but you can see astrologically why he's starting to grate and where where the problem lies. Now, turning to uh, the the transits he's having uh, right now. Uh, so, you know, let's just look at what's happening over this over the weekend. Um, is anything dramatic happening relationship-wise? So, uh, so in terms of the the wider transit, you know, Neptune is at twenty-seven thirty-six Pisces. So, Neptune. Over the last year, you know, certainly a few months, Neptune has been on Trudeau's Mars. It's also been square Canada's moon. Uh, and so Neptune, on, Neptune seems to have really um, highlighted his Mars, it's, it's, uh, but undermined it as well. So I think Canada is seeing that Mars express itself. And that Mars Pluto thing. I mean, okay, I I know you could say that this might go back earlier. I mean, I know that people got upset about um, Justin Trudeau and with you know with COVID and the truckers and all of that kind of thing. Um, and that that maybe when his Mars started to really begin to manifest. But I think that uh, 
but that was a few years ago. Neptune was not was not on his Mars when that happened, but uh, so Neptune Neptune on his Mars is is activating his Mars, but it's also undermining it. And I think that he's perhaps you could say with Neptune on his Mars, he's you could say he's sort of um, losing his strength. That that is a way, is a way of looking at it, and then. There is the way he communicates. Now, a, a problem that, uh, in terms of transits, is concerned, look at Saturn. Saturn is now at 13 one degrees Pisces. So Saturn is starting to make a square. It's very close to a square of his, um, of his Mercury at 12 degrees Sagittarius. And so right now... Um, with Saturn, when, when, where does Saturn, Saturn goes stationary at 12 degrees on November the 15th at 12 degrees 42 Pisces. Now he has got his Mercury at 12 degrees 44 Pisces. So Saturn is stationary at an incredibly sensitive part, point of his chart, his Mercury, the way he's communicating, the way he's thinking. So you could say, Saturn going stationary square your Mercury would be a great sense of depression and hopelessness. So, in ter- and, and also, how is he going to be able to communicate his message? I mean, he, you know, he, I, I know he's just said, I don't know, he's just said that he's going to restrict immigration. Now, he's, isn't that right? Uh, so, Saturn, I mean, that, he's trying to message something. And he's tr- so here is someone who is trying to negotiate with with other members of with other members of his coalition with other members of his party and having Saturn square mercury must make it really difficult to be able to negotiate effectively and it's certainly not going to get any better so you could say that it could be Saturn square his mercury that uh that does him in i mean that that is possible, but I, I mean, I think that we have to sort of consider that here is someone who is very focused on power and somehow wants to stay in government for for as long as possible. And so it might be a good idea to sort of look at things from a sort of a, a broader perspective to ask, you know, what what happens if things go on until 2025? So... Two planets that you certainly want to look at is a Neptune and a Neptune and 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 indeed Saturn as well. So Neptune has already gone conjunct his Mars. Neptune is now retrograde. Neptune will Neptune will hit his Mars. I think on around March the twentieth. He has March the twentieth next year. Neptune is conjunct his Mars, and I think that could be. Um, that could be quite difficult. And then if he's, is, and then, you know, if he's still in power at this stage, you know, Saturn is starting to move into Aries. So Saturn moves into Aries in May. And so on uh, May the 20th, he's got, um, he, on May the 20th, he has got, um, he's got Saturn conjunct his Mars of next year. So if he doesn't, if he, I suppose if he stays in power through through November, if he can get past, I, th- I do think the Saturn square his Mercury in, in November is is quite a big deal. I think his ability to communicate and negotiate is going to be really bad. And I mean, I, you would have thought he has, you have to communicate, you have to be able to have a positive ap- approach if you want to stay in power. But if he's able to sort of continue until sort of next year, then... The next things to look at are Saturn and Neptune hitting his Saturn and Neptune hitting his hitting his Mars, and that's that's a big one. And that's and it's just a reminder that Mars is is so important for him. I mean, that Mars is in a way it's that it's his powerhouse. And as his as Neptune hits that Mars, and as Saturn is hitting at Mars, that is kind of undermining him. Now, looking at his solar arc directions. I've taken his solar arc directions for the weekend, and just seeing if there's any solar arc directions that we need to be we need to be aware of. Um, now, one thing I should, of course, say is that 
in terms of transits that Trudeau has his mid-heaven at 2717 Taurus. So he's already had Uranus going stationary direct on his mid-heaven. And Uranus will is going retrograde now. So Uranus will cross his mid-heaven uh, on May the 18th. So if he's still in power into next year, then sort of May looks like being quite... A, would be quite a difficult month for him with Uranus with Saturn on his Mars, um, Uranus on his midheaven. But anyway, these these are the uh, solar solar arc directions, and I just wanted to see if there's anything anything of interest here. His Mercury is getting hit. There's his solar arc directed Uranus. So remember, solar arc directed. He's what fifty fifty three turning up coming up for fifty three, isn't he? So we move every planet one degree for every year. So we move every planet one degree so we would move everything 53 degrees so his his solar arc directed uranus is starting to move towards his mercury okay we're a year out but i think he's 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 beginning to feel that and he's beginning to feel the feel the pressure of that so that's uh uh, that's happening and his solar arc directed sun is already square his midheaven, so which is of course his progressed sun. So he's got his progressed sun square his midheaven at the same time as he's got Uranus on his midheaven. So I think the solar arc directions are really sort of indicating that uh, you know something something difficult is is unfolding. And then the solar arc directed north node, and the solar arc directed north node is on his Mars. And so it's kind of more of the same. So his Mars is under a lot of pressure. So, you know, I know this is stating the obvious because we know that, you know, sometime over the next year, he's he's going to disappear, uh, I suppose. Uh, but you can see, that certainly in terms of Western astrology, that some really difficult things are happening and it just doesn't stop. And there is this question about how he's going to cope with with Saturn going stationary direct, um, with Saturn going stationary direct, um, square his that's that right square Saturn in yeah square his square his Mercury, and I want to finish by looking at his at his Vedic horoscope, and uh, so uh, his Vedic his his Vedic astro- his Vedic horoscope I mean. It, it tells us um, similar things, but uh, but in a in a different way. So here is yeah here is uh, yeah here's Justin Trudeau's uh, Vedic chart, and I'm not going to spend very long on it, but uh, just to talk about uh, the uh, the things the things that I notice about this. Now, in the Nevedic chart, okay, it can be kind of difficult to read this if one's used to a circular chart, but there is his ascendant. In Remember, he's got Virgo rising western, he's got Leo rising eastern. There's his ascendant in, in, um, in Leo. So he's got this moon-Mars conjunction in the eighth house. And, okay, moon-Mars conjunction can represent uh, someone who has difficult relationships, um, it, it's it's uh, I think that would be regarded as kuja dosha. There's a Mars affliction, and that might have an impact on his married life. And of course, I understand that last year he separated from his wife. I can't remember her name, but he separated from her. And I suppose I suppose divorce is quite common. Divorce and separation are not exactly unusual events. And you can you can see that he's got Saturn in the tenth house. There's the tenth house, Saturn in Taurus in the tenth. So I mean, I suppose someone with Saturn in the tenth is going to be sort of quite interested in in power. So as far as what's happening in terms of of his dashas, so in Indian astrology, uh, life gets divided up into nine periods. Which covered by the seven planets and north node and the south node, so the nine traditional planets of Vedic astrology, and they last for different periods of time. Like the Venus dasha lasts for twenty years, the Mars dasha only lasts for seven years, and he is in his Mars dasha. His Mars dasha started on November the eleventh, twenty twenty-two. 
And I think in terms of the decline of Justin Trudeau, you could say that, in, again, I'm not an expert on Canadian politics, but things started perhaps going seriously wrong for him at the beginning of his Mars Dasha, uh, November the 11th, 2022. And of course, at the beginning of his Mars, Mars Dasha, within Mars is, a, is an affliction in terms of relationships. Soon after his Mars Dasha started, uh, he separated from his wife. I think the announcement of the separation was August the 2nd, 2023. Um, so he's in his Mars Dasha, and right now, he's. In, but there's also a sub Dasha. So there you have nine. You have nine periods ruling the whole life, and then each period is is separate into nine sub periods, and so in. On April the 9th, 2023, uh, he started, no, sorry, April, that was right. On April the 27th of this year, he started his Mars main period and Jupiter sub period. So that's the, fa that's the, the period he's in. But what is perhaps of interest is is the next sub-period he's in. So in, on April the 3rd, 2025, he moves into the Mars... He's in the Mars main period, but he's in the Saturn sub-period. And the Mars, that is going to be difficult. So he's got Saturn in the 10th house. Now, it may be that that is the period from running from April, from April 2025 onwards that things really start to fall apart. And that ties in with some of the transits he's experiencing, in particular the, the Saturn Saturn conjunct Mars on May the 20th, and he's got Uranus conjunct his midheaven on May the 18th of next year, so that all fits. And finally, Justin Trudeau is in, he's experiencing Sadi Sati. So Sadi Sati is this Saturn affliction that we all experience. And the idea is that when Saturn is in the sign before the moon, the sign of the moon, and the sign after the moon, there is an affliction, Sadi Sati, it's an unlucky period. So we go through this for a quarter of our lives, we're in Sadi Sati. So Sadi Sati in itself is not a particularly big deal. And so he's and so the Sadi Sati can be divided up into each Sadi Sati period. You've got the, the, the time when, the, when, the, when Saturn is in the sign before the moon. So, so, he, so he has the moon in his... I know, he's, I know he's got the moon in Aries, Western chart, but he's got, him, he's got the moon in Pisces in his Vedic chart. And currently, Vedic, from a Z, Vedic perspective... Saturn is in Aquarius. I know it's in Pisces Western, but it's in Aquarius Eastern. So currently Saturn is in the sign before the moon. So Sadi Sati has started, but we have not actually got to the um, to the worst part of Sadi Sati, the me the immediate Sadi Sati when the moon is in the same when Saturn is in the same sign as the moon from a from a Vedic perspective, and that doesn't happen until March April of next year. So. March, April next year, Saturn, sidereal Saturn, moves into, moves into Pisces. And that's when Saturn is conjunct his moon, conjunct his Mars. And this is at a time when he's in his Mars Dasha. So I think that that Sadi Sati, start, starting, in, uh, starting in the spring of next year, I would have said that probably... You know, if, if, I don't know, I would have said that, OK, I understand that, that Trudeau is under a lot of pressure at the moment. And that may well be that as Saturn moves to a square of Mercury in his natal chart over the next, over the next few weeks, that he just will not be able to communicate. He will not be able to negotiate. I think he's gonna, his negotiation skills are going to be really bad over the next few weeks. And you would have thought his, it's, it's delicate enough for him that... He just may not be able to cope and, and his coalition may fall apart and he may find it difficult to stay on as prime minister. But if you see him moving on into next year, then 
the next crisis is definitely in the spring. Uh, as as sidereal from from a Vedic perspective, you know, when his Mars Saturn Dasha starts in in April, then you've got um, it's Sadi Sati. Plus, you've got from a Western perspective, you've got Uranus on his midheaven. You've got Neptune. Well, you've you've already had Neptune on his Mars. In Neptune was conjunct his. You've got Neptune conjunct his Mars at the end of March, March the twentieth. You've got Saturn conjunct his Mars, Mars May the twentieth. You've got Uranus conjunct his midheaven May the eighteenth. So yeah. So if he survives into next year, I would have said the time to look for is the spring, and and the spring for Justin Trudeau next year looks really disastrous. Then the question is, if he's no longer prime minister, what is the spring going to be like? I think it's still going to be pretty bad for him. So overall, Justin Trudeau is moving from bad to worse. Um, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it is not looking good and everything, everything negative seems to be coming together for him um, between, between now and, yeah, between, between now and the early summer. But I, I, my focus would really be on the spring, not necessarily now, unless you, unless it is that Saturn square Mercury that just makes it for him just incapable of, incapable of communicating. So that, I mean, I suppose that is, that is possible. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to say on Justin Trudeau for the moment. Um, thank you very much for uh, for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, I'd be very grateful if you were to like it. And if you're not subscribed, I'd be really grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for watching. And I will talk to you again very soon.